Bigla na lang naglaho. <laughs> Hindi, nawala kayo talaga. Promise. Ang bilis. Di ba, tita, iniwan mo ko? No. Hinahanap namin si Kuya Chris. Alam mo, maganda doon. Oh, yung, may mga, yung may mga different umbrellas. Ang gusto mong gawin ko? Pupunta tayo doon, mawawala na naman tayo. <laughs> listen muna, parents. Oh, ayun na, listen tayo. Listen muna at ako. Um, so just before you go down, there's just one thing. Um, you're allowed to take as many photos as you like. Just yes. please keep the flash off for us. Oh. All right, so I'm going to get you down now. Enjoy First your visit. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning from London. Hello. Wow. All the way from Manila. Manila Zoo. Manila Zoo. Manila in London. Oh, let's look at the. Oh, oh my. Wow. It's so cool! Huh? I'm right here, madam. Your Grace? Thank you very much for your walk away there. We'll give you a bit of a chat about what it's all about. Hi everybody, welcome down to the Viking Centre. Hello. Hello. Hi. And the Just me. Is actually a copy of the dig that happened here in the 70s. So right where you're standing, they uncovered 40,000 artifacts at about 16 different houses that were over 1,000 years old. So it's very important you can actually see how everyday Vikings were living. They were craftspeople, they were merchants. I'm going to actually tell a little bit about their health. So what you're looking at here, we're actually in the garden area in this section. We have one garden fence, literally where the autos are there, and the other one is just by here. So it's a, a thin, narrow plot of land, a bit like a ruler or a plank, and that would go down to the river. Now, this is where they would keep their animals. They had quite a lot of livestock here. They actually found about five tons of animal bones here. Ooh, so wow! Wow! to have cows, pigs, chickens, uh, ducks, geese, goats, sheep, horses. So all of this would be in your back garden. So you get a huge range of food, such as meat, but you also get milk, you get eggs, and eventually you get the leather from the animals to turn into leather goods and the fleece from the sheep, so all sorts of things. They're also eating a lot from the rivers. We found a lot of fish bones and eel skeletons, but they also like eating oysters. You can see a few of these oyster shells under the glass. They actually found a staggering three quarters of a million oyster shells here. So this was their favorite food. Think of the shells as the equivalent of sweet wrappers left behind. We found these littered around the entire site. They could not get enough of them. So it is very dirty out in the garden, very messy and smelly. Now it's also smelly for one more reason, and it's not about the animals. It's this lovely hole right here, everybody. That is the toilet pit. That's about 10 foot deep or two wow. meters deep. It does not get emptied. So um, when it becomes full, they would just cover it over and dig themselves another. So uh, make sure you've got a good memory. Don't want to dig into one you've used before. That would be really horrible. And also in the night, mind your footing. You don't want to fall down that toilet. You might have to swim out of it. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very big hazard in the Viking age. 
But uh, we actually found so much that survived on this site because of the waterlogging. Leather. We found 400 leather shoes. We found fabric made from wool and even silk. And really, we found everything inside the toilets. Oh, we're still as fresh and mm. fragrant. <laughs> Yummy. Uh, as the day was put there by a Viking a thousand years ago. And the archaeologists had to dig through all that mess. So they do know what else the Vikings are eating. So they're eating seasonal nuts, grains, berries, eating their vegetables, and drinking lots of beer. So oh. yeah, it's not too dissimilar to lots some of beer, people's Peter. diets today, I suppose. Peter, lots of beer. We did find that something down there we're very proud of. It's in the Guinness World Book of Records. It's the world's largest fossilized human poo ever done. Oh! That Viking wasn't even a vegetable, and that's the reason we did it. Yeah. Did they have enough toilet roll, though? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Why would they do this? They would have moss. They would get sheets of moss off the oh. trees, use it once and throw it away, which sounds good. However, we found a bit of moss that had been used and a spiky holly leaf stuck in the centre of it. So that would have caused quite a bit of a surprise for Viking Viking as well as we all should. This is the house that I'm standing on here. Now your house is not very big. This is one wall of the house and the house would be about six to seven meters long. So the front door will be where that lift shaft is behind me. So we've got one side wall here on my right hand side and the other side wall here. So it's only about three to four meters wide. So it's a very small house and in the very center that's your fire. So that's where you do your cooking, uh, where your warmth comes from, where your light comes from too. But it is only one room, I'm afraid. This house is made like a basket or a willow weave fence. So you put beams of wood in the ground first, weave branches in between, and it's held together with mud, clay, hay, and horse and cow manure. So even your walls are a bit fragrant as well. So it can support a roof, but not an upstairs. So it's just one space that fits about a family of eight to 12 people. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze back then. But you'll be glad of the body heat. And in the winter time, if you want any of your animals to survive as well, they're coming into the house too. Oh, so yeah. literally, hmm? your house is oh, going to be a pig sty because you have a pig in there for three months of the year. Yeah. So yeah, one can step in the house as well and not be very nice. <laughs> but on the ride, you're going to see the houses rebuilt to scale and have a good look at the colours the Vikings are wearing. So you know they're wearing all sorts of lovely colours here. We do have a nice red splodge in the garden. I know it looks sinister, but that's clothes dye. So you know they're affording this nice red colour. So your bag would be very fancy indeed. Oh, yeah. Are we here wearing green? Yes? Well, these are the mid-range colours. So you're probably green. a merchant. You're doing quite well for yourself. However, if you're wearing blues, I can see some blue yeah, jeans blue. and blue tops. Yes, these are very wealthy colours indeed. Well done. And anyone wearing mm. purple? You're probably an emperor. Whoa. Wearing white, you haven't done any dying to it, I'm afraid. <laughs> You're not doing so good. That's it. <laughs> black is very expensive. Oh. So you're having a Viking fashion crisis. But you're looking very good. Hey! Yeah! Okay. <laughs> yeah. So on the ride, on, on sorry, on the stop talking in a minute and I'll get you on that ride. You're going to see the houses rebuilt to scale with Viking animatronics, doing all the jobs the Vikings are doing 1,000 years ago. And we've introduced the smells as well. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Do we have a face mask available to wear it? I'm afraid not. No. Just hold your nose, you'll be fine. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the cat is. Yeah. 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 Including the toilets as well. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. So Let's as go down. You're listening. We'll get you on the ride now. Yeah. It's a very slow ride, don't worry. Just let you know we can hold a maximum of six people in a carriage at a time. But the carriages just keep coming behind one another. So we'll get you all on in a very short time. So thank you for listening. Have a nice time on the ride. Thank you. Six, six. Move, move, move. Do not sit back too quickly. Just put your heads on the speakers. They're right behind you. Okay. Six at a time, um, Peter. Yeah. Three. <laughs>
Okay. See that, Charlie? Is that right? You're doing it again. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know. Ati Kati, you left him again. Yeah, yeah, leaving me again. <laughs> bye bye. No, but it's it's a constant light, it's fine. Take you back in time to your bed, like an angel. The Beatles. The Beatles. Yeah. The International. World War II. 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 Oh. Around the time of Eric Bloodaxe, the last Viking king in Europe, was banished, Jorvik expanded dramatically with new streets, new churches, and a brand new style of houses. It was a busy place, with people arriving from all over the Viking world to visit, trade, and settle. In this multicultural society, people have different appearances, languages, religions, and possessions. The remains of part of this thriving city were found right here, and by carefully piecing together all of the archaeological evidence and what we know from other sources, you can now visit the Viking Age. You have arrived by the River Foss. Ahead lies the city with countless houses and workshops, many of them newly rebuilt, some by this damaged one, a victim of an untended half perhaps. As ships became more seaworthy, the Vikings created wider trading lines, sometimes using chains and middlemen to carry goods from one side of the Viking world to the other. Silks and a cowrie shell found here suggest trade with Central Asia. The Eastern Mediterranean and the Red Sea. It's possible that our trade by this month make their way to Europe to sell their goods. Slave and hunter from Dublin and elsewhere bring in with them the spoils of their raids or backing Slaves were an important part of society all over northern and western Europe at this time. It looks like this slave is trying to make his way up to Copper. But before we get Let's have a look at some of the many craftspeople working here in the city. Here's Sigurd. He's using animal bones and antler from deer to make some everyday objects such as combs, comb cases, skates, and bone bones. Making a comb from antler could be very time consuming, but the ones found here are made from many pieces riveted together and then decorated. We know that the Vikings like to keep themselves well groomed, as we found many cones in the excavations, as well as items such as tweezers and even ear scrubs. We'll now head away from the river towards the street copper and meet some more of the people who lived and worked here. And here you can see a simple single-story building. These older houses were built from posts and waffle and had earth floors and thatched rooms. Most of these houses went out of use in the middle of the 10th century when they were... These early houses were built end on to the streets and had long backyards with rubbish pits in them. It's not likely that they grew much food in the yards, but they probably kept animals there such as those pigs you can see in the pen by the fence. From the many pig bones we found here, we know that Viking pigs were quite short and had a long snout like a wild boar. This is the snake. Pigs will eat almost anything, so it would have been a great way to turn house or a wolf into me. Here's the blacksmith's house. Look inside and you can see his wife by the fire. Roman, the blacksmith, is teaching his son how to sharpen the knife. 
Another building is being built behind Umi's house. Here, the cellar is being dug out and lined with old planks before the upper story is added. You can see a stack of tilts over there that are going to be used to roof this building. Looks like the builders are having a rest there. Thank you. 